to another episode of Talk Story with Spice. I'm Spice, your host. Today, we'll be learning herbal medicine. And so my goal is to give you a deeper understanding of how medicinal plants work, how they affect you in their job and administering them. Then you'll be getting a deeper understanding of herbal medicine and plant medicines and how they work. So, uh, you know, guys, I understand that for a lot of you who are seeking help, you walk into a health food store and boom, there's like 50 kabillion choices on all these herbs and, and products and, and it just has your wires crossed and you don't know what to do and where to go and you think you're doing the right thing because you read up on it. But you know, some of you may have a really positive experience. Others use nothing. Um, so I understand the confusion of it, and that's what this show is about, is kind of giving people a simplistic understanding of medicinal herbs and yourself and how they work and function together. So uh, it's, it's going to be good. You know, in the, in the media, it gets frustrating on my end. Um, I have heard and read the possibility of shutting down health food stores, um, shutting down, you know, things of just medicinal plants being available to others. But if that is the case, they're seriously going to have to shut down every produce stand at every grocery store and every farmer's market. Why? Because every single um, vegetable and fruits have a medicinal factor, have a medicinal property that affect your body in a positive way. And it's, it's something that um, it needs to go much broader towards people's health because, but first I think it all needs to be understood more because it's been lost. And so, you know, helping uh, others with natural medicines, um, it's, I've seen it where it was, you know, foo-foo, witchcraft, whatever, to now it's just gaining popularity daily. And that's an awesome thing from when before you basically had to hide if it was a practice of yours or just not even talk about it. And now it's just, you know, on the widespread, it's in magazines everywhere. And, you know, it's just getting more and more um, positive when, uh, you know, you go to Europe, they've got phytomedicines and it's big over there. It's, it's natural. But, and when you travel to places, third world places or places like Morocco uh, South America, Central America, Mexico, definitely uh, Indonesia, along with Morocco, just other countries in Africa, and so many other places in the world. Herbal medicines, it, it's just the norm. It's like, you know, you go to markets and there's just somebody sitting there with bags and bags and bags of different types of plants that people are buying for their health benefits more than just cooking. And so it, it's just widely known in a lot of regions of the world, just herbal medicines is 
common and part of everyone's life in those countries. Pretty awesome. I hope it, it becomes that in the U.S. and other U.S. influenced countries that I feel have lost that knowledge or that part of life and having it in their life and that lifestyle of having herbal medicines is, is part of their daily world. So hopefully that comes back and uh, becomes the norm again. So I'm sure at one point it was, especially Native American and Hawaiians. So, uh, and throughout the Caribbean, it's the norm. And there's still places that I have been, uh, you know, in the Caribbean that herbal medicine is definitely still part of the culture. And, you know, in Hawaii, it's here. It's just not as abundant as it was and as it should be. In the States, there are people, but it's just not like everybody. And hopefully one day it's just part of everyone's world and everyone understands what's around them and what's there for them to use. And they use it and, and um, benefit with their health. And so make it all just a better place for us all. But another thing that, that irks me is the media, which can hamper someone having a positive experience and really... Um, wanting herbal medicines more in their life. So, you know, goji berry, the media will blast goji berries out there. And it's, you know, no different from eating a raisin or cranberry to a degree. And they don't have this profound experience. So they think, you know, herbal medicine is a joke. Uh, you, I watch so many different plants become illegal from Mawang. With Mawang, it's basically, it's like a natural speed source or uh, has natural um, amphetamines in it but it has great purpose and it can be abused so the media uh, the government takes it off the shelf you know uh, ma wong is more known on our on the common market as ephedra and ephedra is found in tons and tons of over-the-counter medicines cough stuff like ephedra perfect example and it just helps circulation um, you know they use it and sell it to help with cough problems lung problems things like that but that herb that has been taken away from us by our government and the FDA is an amazing herb with amazing properties with amazing benefits and it can be misused um, but it's an awesome plant, you know, and that's been taken from us. Other plants like comfrey, I put comfrey in my body pretty much every day for over 20 something years, never had a problem. Kava uh, had kind of a bad rap in Europe, but it was more tests that were done with people who had alcoholic problems, and then they said it does this, but kava is phenomenal, and that will definitely be on one of my shows. I've been drinking it every day on the daily breakfast of champions um kava is my friend everyone who knows me and stops by um they're drinking kava with me why because first thing i offer when they walk in the door so, you know it's a huge part of polynesian culture um especially fiji where i mean drinking it daily hawaii it is in ceremonial purpose tonga samoa uh, vanuatu uh, new caledonia kava is very well recognized. There's awesome kava bars that have opened up in the United States as well as elsewhere. And, and it's a very healthy drink. Um, there's lots of properties that I'll go over in other shows and excited to share that with you. But but yeah, the media sometimes, they, like, you know, you also have acai and they list all these properties, you know, all the omegas, which are great and all these things it does. But you eat a bowl of acai and these people are expecting this miracle thing to happen and, and nothing really happens. So it's turning them away from herbal medicine, you know, for, for some part. But you go to Brazil and it's the norm. And, and the thing I really liked about, you know, my time in Brazil and other countries is here in the States, you want a carrot juice, it's like four to six bucks. Down there, you go on a street corner, there's a small little section, maybe this size, and it's just a wall of fruits. You point at it, whatever fruit you want, vegetable they throw it in a blender and it's 50 cents it's the norm down there and acai is just um it was norm and i really you know liked it down there i actually had it down there way before it hit the states 
and um, they mix it with guadana, which is a medicinal herb that gives you a, a good positive energy. And so, you know, the media to me kind of destroys um, and and the reputation, but the the understanding of herbs. And so, they need to keep you know away from it, and and um, you know unless it's something positive to say, and they really go beyond uh, breakdown analysis and stuff like that, that um, giving properties and, and giving a deeper understanding of what specific plants and herbs can actually do for you, that will actually give you benefit that you recognize. You know, on the subject of culture, uh, it's been a blessing living here in Hawaii uh, for a long period, majority of my life. Why? Because it's, uh, I consider it, you know, being in Hawaii with my spiritual work and using all natural plant medicinal herbs to help others, it's just way more accepted. Why? Because you've got Hawaiians, you've got uh, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, um, in other cultures where that was just the norm for their culture on a daily basis. And I can't forget Filipinos. You walk into a Filipino market, they've got uh, just in their cooking sections and, and uh, produce, I mean, they've got a lot of medicinal plants that they just cook with and they eat a lot of. So it's been great being in Hawaii for that purpose because it's just widely accepted. I mean, guys, I, mean, I can't forget the Samoans and the Tongans. They are a definite culture that uses herbs that they know about. I mean, I'll, I'll see them here uh, in the woods harvesting certain tree barks and stuff. Even when I was in uh, Samoa, I was on a surf trip, super deep, outer islands of Samoa. I was so impressed because the little kids knew all the plants around and how to use them for medicines. And that was that was so impressive to me um, because you don't you definitely don't see that in the States um, on the wide where all the kids in school know the plants around them, the trees around them for their health benefits or, you know, if they get a cut or something like that. And so when I was in deep outer island Samoa, like the kids knew every single plant around and that was just awesome to see that and that was years ago uh, on a, on an epic surf trip and dive trip spear fishing trip that i took so um yeah pretty pretty impressive the uh the tongans samoans and polynesians micronesians melanesians it, it's just herbal medicine is their norm you know times when i was in this in in the united states uh working on people i just kind of let my work carry through someone's positive experience and telling others. Um, but it, I know for a fact that others in my field of work, there was some struggles. Um, you know, it's considered, you know, hippie stuff or, you know, bunch of hogwash or whatever. Um, but there is an effectiveness with it. And so I just kind of let people experience my work and word of mouth and, and it, it works fine and I helped a lot of people there and I send stuff all over the world um, in every single continent and country I've sent from this little medicine lab um, natural herbal lab that I have I've sent all over the world you know so but you know like I said being in Hawaii and all the cultures that are here it's it's just been great because of the history of herbs uh, throughout hundreds and actually thousands of years of being utilized by so many cultures around the world. I would say every culture, you know, even Caucasian from Europe. Um, they, herbs was an everyday thing at one point in time um, and very well recognized uh, for, for use and, and utilization of. First things first, you, you've got to look at herbal medicine that it, it, if you look at culture, in my opinion, culture came from what? It came from plants. And it's why so many cultures developed in the manner that they did from the food source that they, they did with the, the cooking 
all the way to the cloths they made and the dyes and the patterns of the um, dyes they created on the clothing to their homes that they built, um, tools that they made. It all came from nature. And, you know, and along with herbal usage, culture, like I said, from crafts and things of that nature, you know, you, it also goes into a long, deep history, especially African. You've got voodoo and voodoo. Um, curio, which is more um, the white magic rather than black magic, you know, and then it goes all the way back to biblical times. You've got witchcraft, things like that. So, you know, and this includes like over a hundred or more different herbs in the Bible that I've worked with and, you know, is, is available for us that's been used throughout, throughout history. You know, um, herbs have such a, a long, long history for blessing mankind with medicines and helping us and being there for us. So herbs have had their place throughout history for so many different um, things from medicines to just a whole array of different uses and how they're used. Um, how they're used medicinally, whether it's an oil like aromatherapy, things of that nature, um, externally, internally. Um, and so on and so on and so on. So I look forward to sharing a lot of that with you on the upcoming shows. And then it, it goes all the way up into now where if you look at uh, cooking, for example, you know, the, the perfect example is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving ham. Like, you know how you see the picturesque, perfect honey-baked ham with cloves in it. So, of course, the, the cloves is a flavoring agent um, but really, also what it's doing is it is uh, killing kind of bacteria and other un unwanted things in the meats for, um, you know, to also enhance digestion. And that also goes with uh, rosemary. I know a lot of my friends who uh, cook certain roast uh, from, from the, you know, whatever they hunted and harvested, they're making roast with rosemary. And rosemary is just full of different medicinal properties. So not only for its flavoring agent with cooking, but it as well has antibacterial properties from the oils that it yields. And it helps digestion and it helps get rid of bacteria, unwanted bacteria in the meats. Um, you know, it's fit for the queen. Back in the day, rosemary was really prized for uh, royalty because they would actually drink teas of it, the queen. And um, I, I actually know rosemary as the queen's herb, and it promotes circulation. So it actually promotes inner beauty outwardly, and it uh, enhances digestion. It promotes circulation, and it cleans the blood. It has so many different properties. So that is uh, also uh, a very well-known property with, with just culturally medicinal herbs with the foods. Uh, and things of that nature. The big one, guys, is garlic. Who, uh, you know, hasn't had garlic on their food? I mean, garlic, you know, Italians are so known for their dishes, pasta dishes. Um, a, a lot of people cook with garlic, and I will give garlic some credit for being a very powerful herb. It's just more than your flavoring. Um, one of the strongest blood cleansers, um, definitely in the top tan for sure um you know garlic cleans the blood and you can actually utilize it for the funk i mean diseases stds cancers it's a powerful blood purifier uh you know it it has a reputation of keeping vampires away so um i don't think you can go wrong with cooking with garlic and having it in your your diet and and uh using it you know a few times a week so garlic's definitely an example of culture. I know that like Hippocrates, um, considered the father of modern day medicine, of herb medicine, worked with over 400 plants. I know he was really uh, into using garlic and recommended garlic for, uh, for health problems. So um, yeah, garlic, good stuff. Yeah, the same goes with, if any of you are a fan of sushi, um, as well as poke, things like that. Uh, you see the Japanese have always had ginger and wasabi with it. And a lot of times, um, 
I hear people and I have worked with people who get food poisoning, wow. mainly because they're drinking alcohol, which wipes out a lot of their positive good microflora when they're eating sushi, which is raw fish. And so what can happen is the alcohol wipes their back their good bacteria and count down. And so it doesn't allow them to properly digest the raw fish that they were eating. So the Japanese have had not only ginger um, to help bring up that count of good bacteria and to break down the food, um, wasabi. And if any of you ever had real wasabi instead of majority of what you see out there, which is either horseradish, horseradish tree, and it's dyed, real wasabi is absolutely amazing. Um, but also green tea. Green tea is very antiviral. Anytime you get into um, an herb with a property that is antiviral, antibacterial, it helps uh, your immune system. Your immune system comes from your stomach. So what it's doing is it's bringing up your positive count and numbers of your good bacteria to break your foods down. And so a lot of people I do it, you know, I ask them um, when they do get food poisoning uh, from raw fish and, and sushi and, and other meals that they're eating. It's really important like certain herbs uh, think about it, like with Thai food, you've got lemongrass, you've got basil that they're adding to their foods. Uh, and in Mexico, they've got cayenne, they've got lime, they're adding a lot of foods as a flavoring agent, but in actuality, it's really helping them digest uh, their foods better and, and also bringing them other benefits health-wise. And so the cultures around the world the use of herbs, it, it goes infinitely around the world, all the way to, you know, Egyptian times and other cultures where certain plants were buried in the tombs. Uh, this includes oils, when they were making essential oils. I know that there was um, essential oils in the tombs that were two to 3,000 years old of lavender, and they went to open the lid and it flew across the, across the room. Why? Because it's still alive. Even though it's in a jar, it's a couple thousand years old, that pure oil, it's still alive. It's almost like that plant still in the ground, growing and towards the sun and collecting rain and, and nourishing itself from the soil. Um, you just kind of change and transform its form from a plant into volatile oils. And so the same goes with behind me here. For those of you who are listening uh, and those of you watching, what's amazing is these plants, even though they're all in jars, they are still alive, right? So once you add them to the body and they hit water, boom, they reactivate and they go and do their job. And they know what to do, where to go. And I'll explain that in a second. Because basically the way I see it and the best, the best way for me to explain it is you have physical DNA and you have spiritual DNA. So plants will grow in the form of generation, basically, as the seed that they were, just like you. Your physical DNA is you've come basically as a seed and grown to look like uh, physically, your mom, your grandparents, your dad, um, someone down your lineage. But then there's spiritual DNA. And the spiritual DNA with plants is just like, um, you've got to look at it, all of you. All of you are absolutely amazing, absolutely beautiful. You all are here for a certain reason, a certain purpose. God brought you here for something very specific, if not more than one thing. And you have to really equate that we need peasants and we need kings. And sometimes people just don't want that responsibility that the king would have or the president, so to speak. Um, but the peasant is needed to make the whole system work. And when it comes to that, everyone should be loved and respected equally. And so when it comes to plants, their spiritual DNA, basically you look at as their properties, okay? So when it comes to plants. And so what is amazing about plants, like like I said, is you know, with the spiritual DNA is they just know they just know where to go. Um, whether it's it's your liver, your kidney, 
go and help your stomach, feed your whole body with nutrition, clean your blood, go to your brain, go to your heart, pump circulation through your system. Um, other plants spiritual. They know exactly what to do, where to go, where, where certain emotions are hiding. And they know how to get into those emotions and open them up and, and kind of free you of those emotions, which is amazing that that's available and out there for us, you know, um, and promoting circulation externally, internally. Um, you've got herbs that know to go right to the bowel and free you of a bunch of gook and junk that's built up over time and, and release it, you know, so it, it's pretty impressive, pretty amazing. And so when a plant, um, its properties, take a look at like a chipmunk, okay, they know to fill their cheeks fat. That's part of their programming. That is their spiritual DNA. A pelican has this big sack to dive down and scoop fish. That is their spiritual DNA. They are born with that. They know exactly what to do. It's like when elk or buck, they get antler racks, they know to scrape on trees. It's just part of their spiritual DNA, part of what they come into the world knowing with their existence without thinking about it. You know, also guys, think of whales and dolphins, you know, with their uh, spiritual DNA, they just know to dive, hold their breath, they've got their blowhole, it's just part of them, and that is part of spiritual DNA. With whales, just look at their migration. I mean, they, they come here to the islands in Hawaii, and travel back to Alaska, Canada area, and, and thousands of miles, they, they send song to one another. Um, I mean, I, I love it here when you're free diving or spear fishing during the winter when they're here. You can actually hear their songs bouncing off the bottom. And um, that's part of their spiritual DNA, their migration. And the same goes with, like, birds is a great example. Um, you know, most people know that birds nest kind of the cup shape. But uh, I actually watched a bird not too long ago build a nest. And it was in the shape of an egg. And the mind-blowing thing is this little bird was taking grass and literally like it was sewing, sewing a nest together. And that's its spiritual DNA. It is programmed, like I said, plants, and plants know where to go and what to do. This little bird innately is born and knows to make these nests in the manner that it does. I, that's absolutely amazing. Just like I was speaking about with plants, plants knowing what to do. Uh, there's nature has this thing about themselves it's like they have this natural programming good nature with all the fish all the animals all the plants it just knows what to do which is amazing and so that's what i'm talking about with spiritual dna and when it comes to medicinal plants medicinal herbs they know what to do they know where to go they know how to help you plant so what i'm going to talk about now is different properties of plants and what they actually do so with, with certain plants, um, uh, you have plants that are considered antispasmodic, is hopefully pronounced correctly, um, or a nervine. And so most people think the liver is the most important organ. Um, I've always said the stomach. If the stomach's not working, the whole body's not working. But when it really boils down to it, the most important organ of the human body is the nervous system. If the nervous system is shot, if it's frayed from certain parts of lifestyle where it gets robbed, then that person isn't relaxed and grounded and centered in their own body. Then their stomach becomes tight. They don't digest properly from there, and all the problems stem from that. And so that's what nervines or antispasmodic type herbs do is they feed the nerves around the nerves is called a myelin sheath. That's what the medical field calls it. But in actuality, what it is, it's just calcium. And so that feeds the nerves. And the more those nerves are fed, the more you're grounded, the more you relax in your body, the more your body functions properly as it is supposed mm -hmm. to. So there's also, uh, along with, as I spoke, um, antispasmodics and nervings, you know, along with that category, uh, 
another more proper term, more recognized term would be uh, a sedative. So it falls in the same place and same category with function of basically feeding the nerves so that a sedative feeds the nerves so much, um, you know, you do have plants with natural opiates that are non-addictive and you could consider that as a sedative. Uh, there's other plants that I use, uh, nervings, that basically can lay you out, um, put you in la la land, or, you know, pain uh, mostly is probably the, the most recognized use is for sedatives um, and people who have trouble sleeping, which a lot of people do, but you really want to go to the problem and the sedative is just a, you know, a positive band-aid for the moment with sleep problems, but there's other herbs that you want to use to help someone basically uh, kind of conquer their sleep problem in time. You also have what's called diuretics. Some of you may know. Uh, diuretics are certain specific herbs. You've got burdock, dandelion, um, gosh, the list goes on, cornucopia, you've got cleavers, you've got joe pie, you've got so I many, the list goes on and on. And what a diuretic does is it takes your kidneys and just basically flushes them. Diuretics are to make your shishi parts, your urethra, your kidneys, everything start pumping. Because what can happen over time, if your digestion is off, you can get backed up in your kidneys, they can get swollen, you can get infections, things of that nature. And so what they do is they just start really pumping, getting the kidneys flushed, and it's an important thing. And so a lot of things in our natural diet, like carrots, uh, here in Hawaii, we've got Japanese influence. So you have gobo. Uh, that is for flushing the kidneys. There's so many just natural vegetables and fruits that actually help do that, as well as the other properties that I'm speaking on. You also have what's called uh, herbs that are a demulcent or mucilagus. And so to give you an understanding of that, what it is, is um, there's a flower here and I put it in water and I don't boil it or anything. I let it sit and in about 30 minutes to an hour, I spoke about it in my first show, you get a gel substance that you can actually see in the jar and so what that does is lubricate so for for your mucilagus properties or what's called a demulcent basically it, it coats for those of you who have stomach problems it, it brings relief uh, if you do have a kidney infection it helps coat that area and bring relief as well the urethra tubes uh, it can also in time coat the bowel which is what some people need who are consistently constipated it's amazing what people deal with that i've worked with who haven't even gone to the bathroom once a week some even people i've worked with haven't even gone to the bathroom in one month only one time and so those type help with other herbs then other properties that uh are there that herbs will offer us is uh, a big one is called the, is an alternative um, most known which drives me crazy in the media today they call it free radicals so an alternative type herb or alternative they are basically blood cleansers okay so there's so many types of herbs that clean the blood and why are you cleaning the blood so once the lymph nodes can get clogged when the stomach's not digesting properly that can back up in the bloodstream and the lymphs are doing their job. They're catching. They're like catchers and catching all the impurities. And so impurities get trapped in the blood and it makes you bog and it makes you slower. So that's when you want to clean your blood. Um, it's something I think everyone should do. So it's like your car. After a while, imagine a car that's never had its oil changed. That goes the same with the human body. And so alternative type herbs, blood cleansing herbs are key for health and proper health and cleaning the blood and and so that's another property wow. when it comes to flushing the body the bowel you have what's called an apparent you have a laxative which is uh, a term that most people know about and then you have a cathartic so they all do partially the same thing one's just stronger than the other so when you work with what's called an apparent those are mild laxatives that's for someone who just needs kind of a, a light kickstart. 
Uh, it's great for working with children because children's systems are so much more delicate than an adult. And then a laxative just basically flushes you. And uh, you've got bearwood, you've got buckwood, uh, a really well known is cascara, um, you've got senna, sen and then um, a cathartic would be like witch's root, you've got uh, may pops, mayflower, and there's even plants that I can wrap your belly with and you sleep with at night and when a, a cathartic basically guys your head comes flying out your coli and so what happens is that is a drastic laxative basically it's what a cathartic is um, a cathartic is basically like it's just a powerful laxative is what a cathartic is uh, it just steps up the game of a laxative and, and it's needed when there's people like I said there's people that haven't gone in the bathroom um, literally in in a month and so that is super toxic why because all that's backing up in their system and it's very common you'd be surprised at how many people deal with that and a lot of that is stemmed from emotions but you have to get that flush so that the mana the spiritual energy starts to move again so it gets their body flow going and it's very common okay and then there's herbs that are really needed in this day and age and they've got kind of multiple uses You've got antibacterial, you've got an antiseptic. Um, those are obviously for cuts and wounds, as well as your immune system. So there's certain herbs, I mean, the most widely known on the common market. There's way better ones, but they're really good as echinacea. There's different types of echinacea. Um, and then there's golden seal. And so what they do is they, they raise the vibration in the body, but they go in and they kill kind of... I would say bad or negative microbes or just impure blood. They're, they're good as well for cleaning the blood, but raising the vibration of your, of your body and enhancing your immune system and just cleaning out impurities. And they're also, knowing how to work with them, um, you can work with uh, specific diseases and cancers, um, flus and colds, but when it comes to that, Basically, a lot of people are using echinacea and golden seal for flus and colds, but here's the problem, is it's not really cleansing, it's going after the virus. So if someone's got a cold or a flu, you're killing it, but you're leaving behind what's causing the flu and the cold. That's when you really want to cleanse. And so what you're really wanting to do is, is cleanse the system, but if with with certain diseases and stuff like that there's antiviral herbs that you can use and antiseptic type herbs that can go and your objective is to exhaust those diseases that's in the body and in time flooding the system and getting positive results okay you also have uh what's known as aphrodisiacs um it can be known as uh entheogens or most people would know it as a hallucinogen me and a few others know them as light bringers and i've actually got a show coming out and that show will be dedicated towards understanding hallucinogens uh spiritual medicine and their uses and i have an amazing testimonial that um we used on a five-year-old kid that brought him back and he was just gone um using spiritual medicine using what we call light bringers but most people would associate as a hallucinogen it's just knowing how to work with them properly another one is uh, a diaphoretic and so diaphoretic what those plants do is they are they make you perspire and your objective when you when you drink it is is you drink it hot and so it's also a cleansing cycle so when i'm doing a nipi uh, which is known as like a Native American sweat lodge. I like to drink that, and and you can utilize those because if you gotta you gotta imagine it's like literally shoving a wall of water through you, where you're getting this power cleanse and detoxing out of your system, and using that with other type of herbal programs for people who are on drugs and we're trying to get them off drugs um, and other problems. That's a really good way to help somebody. A positive um, herbal property is what's known as an astringent, which is uh, the best example is green tea. Um, so if you can understand an astringent, what an astringent does is it takes your cells and it tightens cellulose and it pushes out impurities. So all you women out there, 
um, something like lemongrass tea, a lot of that, green tea, that's really good. It keeps your youth. You're seeing these people go and these women get these crazy plastic surgeries and their face looks all stretched out when all they had to do is take care of themselves properly. And they'll hold their youth, especially using uh, herbs and stuff like that and teas with astringent properties. The Japanese women never experienced menopause until Coca-Cola apparently came in the country. And their skin's always so good when I've been all over Japan. And it's because they're always constantly drinking green tea and other herbs with positive properties, like with astringents in it. So you've also heard, um, I'm going to tan your hide. That comes from basically using oak bark and boiling it down. And so as a bow hunter and, and hunting deer, when you want to preserve the hide using a herb that's high in tannins, which oak bark is, it's, it's basically causing those cells to tighten up. And from there, you are preserving that skin and preserving the fur. There's other ways that you got to preserve the fur so it doesn't fall out or the hairs on your, on your skin pelt. But that is what you're doing when you hear, I'm going to tan your hide. So basically what that means is I'm tanning the hide. And so that is um, what that means. Uh, other herbal properties, you have emollients. And emollients are your friend. Uh, externally on skin and it's basically looked at how I kind of spoke about mucilagus herbs uh, or demulcents it's more of mucilagus demulcents for your skin and skin softeners and here in the tropics here in the islands there are really good herbs when you know how to work with them that are good are really good for softening your skin and you know most emollients go with certain carrier type oils or um, oils that come from you know, plant materials like shea butter is one of my favorites. Um, that's a great uh, oil for doing bodywork massage. But it also, what a lot of those oils do, and if you mix them with certain herbs that have skin softeners as well, then they soften the skin, but they hold moisture. Um, for a lot of people who have drier skin, you're not, you're, you're you're dealing with drier skin because you're evaporating your water content, you know. So emollients um, are your friend for basically uh, holding your youth and keeping your skin nice. Oh, and then there's what's known as an expectorant. An expectorant is something that just helps pull phlegm from your chest when you're coughing and lots of pressure on your chest and, and lots of goop that's added up over time. Right. An expectorant is more known for pulling stuff out of your lungs when you're you're congested um you've got low clot you've got other types uh ibicac is one that helps pull stuff out cardinal leaf ophelia and what they do is they just go in and help pull um even actually smoking sage uh white mountain sage can help pull that stuff up and and open the lungs for breathing and stuff like that and expectorate. And so there's tons of different um, herbs you can use. Whorehound's a really uh, well-known one for coughs and just lung problems and things like that. But a lot of times when it boils to lung problems, it's spiritual energy trapped in the heart. And then aminagogs. Aminagogs is basically herbs that tone the female regions. Um, there's other herbs and properties you know, that do that, but that's one specific character uh, herbs and personality of traits of different herbs that come to mind is uh, what's known as an amenagogue, which is basically uh, a specific type of function for herbs that tone the female regions. You know, that's, that's really needed for women to just be clockwork in their cycle, you know, so that it prevents cramping and, and everything just can check and in flow. It works. So it works properly and, and um, nice and, and smooth. Another is. A nutritive and so a nutritive basically is nutrition and so you've got nutritives that are basically high in vitamins high in minerals uh, high in calcium high in iron that's basically what a nutritive means so you've got kelps and, and um, tons of different herbs uh, a good one uh, is gopher weed or nettles is a very well-known one and that is a way of, of getting lots of nutrition uh, natural vitamins um, and so that's what a nutritive is. Other properties of medicinal herbs, um, 
pretty simple a digestion, a, di a digest, yeah, I can't even say it correctly, and you have carminative, which basically helps you expel gas and break your food sound better in digestion. The most widely known one is ginger. You've got fennel. Other plants that are antiviral, like lemongrass, I consider a digestion. Um, so many different plants, like I said, rosemary, all these different plants that are culinary herbs, people don't realize they are helping you break your food down better um, to prevent, you know, your food sludging up and maybe giving you food poisoning, making you sick. So it is awesome to throw, you know, whatever flavoring agent, natural um, plants for, for culinary purpose in there. You know, you've got thyme, um, thyme, whatever you want to call it. Uh, like I said, lemongrass, you've got sages, you've got all these different culinary herbs. Use them, guys. Their purpose goes beyond flavoring. It's actually helping you digest, clean your blood, um, all these different things, you know. And the biggest one that I've been seeing lately, and I'm not really stoked on the way the media is promoting it, is called an adaptogen, okay. And I'm even hearing people coming to me and they're like, oh, this doctor said take this adaptogen and I'm looking at it for what? And they're promoting it as anti-stress, but really those adaptogens that you read about, you know, ginseng is the biggest one that is there, but an adaptogen really is what you call a catalyst type herb. So it's an herb that you use with these type of herbs and their function to enhance their function is what an adaptogen is really used for. And I would consider it and call it more of a catalyst herb is the proper term that I would give it. There's also uh, a big one, uh, anthelmetics. Um, basically those are for worms and parasites and those are huge. Uh, there's so many different uh, well-known plants for those, black walnut, the holes, the leaves. Uh, wormwood's probably the one that's been used for centuries, and then there is uh, there's just tons and tons and tons of different ones. Um, there's there's really good ones here that grow on the islands that I use to help people. Um, Anikio is a really good one. I um, mean, you just use a little bit. Neem is a very well known one. So there's tons of different anthelmetics, and what they do is they just go in and they just kill the parasites and the worms and help flush them and rid them from your body um, or your pet's body. And so when it, when it comes to herbs, like I said, these are alive, even though they're in jars, you, you've got different, you, you have different forms of the herbs that I will be doing in other shows. And what you're doing is you're basically taking it from this form, basically from a plant, and you're transforming it either into an extract, uh, a, a pure oil. Um, smoking is, is another way. One that I love is the frequency, and that's my next show. I'm excited to share that one with you guys because the frequency is something that all you guys can do, uh, and, and a lot of you can do with yourself, and even the non-believers in this type of thing, they can do this, and they can have a very profound experience. It's something you can do with your kids. Um, the frequency of the plant is going to be super cool to share with you guys, so I'm super excited to share that in my next show uh, to give you guys an understanding of more of what plants have for us to offer with health and spiritual health is what those frequencies are for. Uh, and then there's ferments, which is more cooking and stuff like that, but those krauts and they develop good bacteria for digestion. So you're just taking a plant, whether you're, you're taking it in tea form um, or the best for me when people come to me is powder. Okay. So if, if you're taking herbs, and you're wanting results, it's not like once a day, okay? So when you're taking herbs for a medicinal purpose to achieve helping a health problem that you may be dealing with, you're wanting to take three times a day, okay? Sometimes when I'm dealing with cancers and diseases and other things like that, I start stepping that up um, four or five, sometimes six times a day. It just depends on what's going on. But a level teaspoon and a cup and a half of water three times a day. I usually say morning, noon, and sunset. And where you get results when it comes to medicinal herbs is flooding the body. And that's how you achieve positive results with herbal medicine, plant medicines. And so, yeah, good stuff.
for me, I, I'm not really big on teas uh, for administering as medicinal properties. I'm more like teas just, you know, you're getting medicinal properties from it. But, you know, I more look at teas as for enjoyment rather than really going full force and giving the medicine. Um, it all depends, you know. Uh, another transformative thing to do with plants is externally, you know, you've got oils, but also saps. That's a well-known, long-time thing. Um, we were making when I was young. You make it in mutton tallow or, or hog lard. And what you're doing is you can use this day and age, uh, you can use natural carrier oils like olive oil, macadamia oil, and you're putting the plants and you're just basically heating them up to where the properties are released into the oils and using it on your skin for whatever problem you, you're trying to address. Each plant, and this is my weak point, and I hope that if any of you are getting into herbs or plants and farming, uh, there's a universal language with plants, and you have a genus and a species. So Latin is the universal language and basically what latin does you've got a genus and a species so like let's take peppermint spearmint they fall under mintha um and anything mint in the mint family has a square stem that's how you can recognize and then the species is something that gives it recognition you know and that's my weak point uh i really really appreciate native botany um for me, like Hawaiian, um, you know, and Native American, they're really good at, at kind of their own classification and description of a plant for recognition. So you take, uh, let's see, Copico. So it means two sacs. So along the midrib, which is the line, the main vein, and it feeds the veins out on the leaf, there's holes, right? The sacs. And Copico means two sacs. So there's sacs all along and there's a little mite that lives in there and it actually makes that plant exist. Without that mite, it doesn't exist. And so the Hawaiians gave name to all their trees, you know, like Kukui, which means light. And that's what they made light from, from the oil. And then Koa, Koa means strength. And, you know, it has properties, medicinal properties as well. But um, it was used for a bunch of other other things and so it's just known for its strength as a wood and they just had their own classification which i really appreciate the native plant classification the native botany pretty pretty impressive and and if you are going to get into this go beyond my weak point and make it your strong point and learn latin and study it up because it will help you through identification and when it comes to herbs and medicinal plants if you are out in the field and you are wanting to pick your own medicines and things of that nature i'm assuming it's kind of like a drug dealer don't know you don't show you basically meaning if you're not a hundred million percent positive that that is that particular plant or you know what that plant is don't mess with it don't put it in your body because it can cause harm um for maybe the last time ever and you know um, nobody wants that for you so yeah study up and you know there may be an herbalist in your area that would know the plants and can show you there's a lot of great books out there i'm assuming with with photographs that can help but there are plants like in the hemlock family so many plants look alike and you know you can have carrot seed in a hemlock and you pick the wrong one it's your last time picking a plant if you're going to ingest it you know so make sure you know 100 percent what you're picking and putting in your body it's a key factor when it comes to herbs and, and medicinal plants and ingesting them for your health. The, the biggest thing when it comes to working with medicinal plants, um, I'm seeing in two years, they're giving people master herbalist titles. They've never even seen the plant, pulled it out of the ground, worked with it. They just read a book and they've been given a title. I've worked with over 11,000 plants, thousands of people, and I still to this day will not give myself that title as a master herbalist. The art of herbs, medicinal herbs, and working with them, it comes basically, you know, there are herbs that you can use and have positive benefits from on a, a single level of just that one herb, but I like to kind of create a symphony orchestra of harmony and 
mix specific herbs for that specific problem um, to make it that much more effective. And that is the art. And the only way to really know that art is to work individually with each plant. So when I say I've worked with over 11,000 plants, I've literally put them in my body and worked with them or on my body. I'm not going to ever give anybody anything that I haven't worked with. And so that art is something that comes with time and working extensively with that one plant until you have a relationship with it and then you move on to the next one. And so working with these plants and then putting certain plants together, because when you're mixing, some of them could be a quarter teaspoon, some could be six parts and then one is one part and three parts. It's just knowing each individual plant and how do you know them because you've worked with them. You've put them inside your body, you've worked with them uh, for days or weeks and understood them more. You developed a relationship with them and that's a key factor on really um, the whole purpose and reason behind using herbal medicine is, is the art of basically formulation is what it is and mixing them before you're given to someone rather than just reading a book and saying yeah I'm an herbalist or a master herbalist and then you're giving people something because even even clove or peppermint if person has an accumulated energy in their body, it can actually do damage because if that energy is stuck, then those peppermints and those cloves can sit and not get digested properly. And that oil, that oils from those two plants can literally eat through the lining of their stomach and cause more problems. Spirulina, that's a well-known in wheatgrass. That can put acids in their body and cause lots of problems if they've got specific emotions built up. So knowing each individual plant before you're even thinking of giving it to someone or yourself. And the way I look at it, guys, you know, think about it. God isn't like going to drop us off here on earth and be like, all right, good luck. You know, he, he blessed us with, you know, so much of the amazing fruits and vegetables and, and, and things of like that. But he, I feel he gave us, you know, so many different medicines um, for our health and on a global scale, because you know, one plant you can get here on this side of the world, you may not be able to get over here on this side of the world, but you have something comparable that can do just, you know, the same type of job for helping a person with whatever health problem, which is amazing. And um, I look at it, you know, this day and age, we've got pharmaceuticals, and I'm not going to knock the, the medical field down, but I feel there's a lot of stuff. I look at it like I've had 11,000 plants in my body. Imagine if a medical doctor put every single pharmaceutical that he's describing or she's describing in their body. Um, they might may not be here anymore to, uh, subs to write subscriptions anymore, you know. So that's just my thought and theory. And, you know, you got to look at it. We are organic. We're composed of the same thing the earth is made of. We are all 100% natural. And the majority of pharmaceuticals are synthesized, meaning... Let's look at it this way. If you take an herb, so let's say a banana peel, and you have a pharmaceutical, and that's synthesized, basically like plastic, you know, um, is an example, an idea, and you throw them on the ground and just leave them, what is going to break down first? Okay, the same goes with your human body. What you're putting in, what can it break down completely and properly and absorb and utilize? And other stuff, it just can't break down completely. Um, that's where I stand with it, you know. And so, you know, there are pharmaceuticals out there that can be very helpful during specific times. But I think it's more, it's up to everyone to really address their, their own health and to take care of themselves. And so people kind of um, want to look outwardly rather than in inwardly and, and taking care of themselves. You know... Uh, the big thing as well with the media is that is a positive thing that they're pushing. Um, and they say preventive type health. Uh, I'm going to be really straightforward with you guys um, out of love and out of experience that when it comes to preventative herbs, preventative health, preventative medicines, um, herbs and diet are wonderful, obviously. 
but I'm going to be straightforward with you after working with thousands of people, taking on energy, on doing psychic readings and spiritually, um, doing work on people, and working with, like I said, over 11,000 plants. Preventative medicine is, you're better off uh, being true to yourself, meaning um, spiritually taking care of yourself. Uh, lots of meditation, I think, is the best medicine that will ever be. And that's coming from someone who's worked with a lot of plants, been all over the world working with plants, in different tribes, different cultures, and different regions of the world. And spiritual exercise, you know, I like to see meditation, but a lot of people think meditation is just sitting there. There are spiritual exercises you can do that are so highly beneficial at helping you maintain your youth, maintain a positive energy, a positive vibe, a positive outlook on life. And so there's my um, love to you guys for taking care of yourself and what I feel the true definition of for preventative measures, preventative um, health, um, you know, health problems and things like that. So guys, just be good people, do the right thing, tell the truth. Um, you know, it all adds up, um, any negativity because you don't think from here, you think from your whole body and it's, it's either positive or negative. And so positivity is your best medicine and sound and always will be. Ooh, uh, guys. And if you are stoked on today, I hope you are, um, hope I kind of broke you in to a little bit of deeper understanding of herbs and medicinal plants and, and how they work and, and their function, their properties, and why they're here for all of us. Um, be sure and like and share and subscribe to my channel, Island Spice Hawaii, as well as uh, feel free to check out my website, islandspicehawaii.com. I've got amazing herbal products that have proven themselves for over 20 years, as well as uh, a logo wear line. And you can follow me in my world on Island Spice Hawaii on Instagram. So that's at Island Spice Hawaii as well as my Facebook, Island Spice Hawaii. So everything is Island Spice Hawaii. And so be sure and, and check them out. And once again, like, share, and subscribe. Hope you're stoked. And so guys, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this show, this, this other episode of Talk Story with Spice. And um, I look forward to the next show. The next show, guys, tune in. It's frequency. So I can sit here and talk about medicinal herbs all day long, and you're not really going to grasp it um, without the experience. With this next show coming up with frequencies, you're going to get to do exercises that I'm going to show you. And a lot of you who are non-believers um, are going to have a profound experience. And what's cool is, is you can do this with your kids, your family, um, with yourself and so yeah you can do this on your own and it's safe and if you are intimidated by what I'll be showing with plants then I'm gonna have other things that you can work with to get the frequency of and work on yourself and and have a profound experience and you know you're gonna see for yourself um, some positive benefits and it's gonna be super cool so I'm really excited to share that with you so once again I hope you've enjoyed the show uh, I'm Spice, your host. Thanks for watching Talk Story with Spice. And I'm going to leave you with my sponsors. A message from them and hang tight because I've got an amazing song by Maui's own John Kenny Maka. So be sure and, and stick in there and, and um, check him out and listen to this song he's got for you. So once again, big love to you from the islands. Uh, it's great uh, sharing this knowledge with you and I look forward to more. And as the show progresses... I'll be having special guests on here. It's going to make the show that much more fun. But hang tight because there's a lot of things I want to share with you before we get to that. So take care, everyone. Big love. And I'm Spice. See ya. Catch you soon. I'd like to give thanks and a huge shout out to Aribe Tea Company. Aribe Tea is an amazing all-natural tea company that uses organic and locally sourced ingredients from right here in the Hawaiian Islands. Both brewed and bottled in Hilo, Hawaii of the Big Island with lots of flavors to choose from, Aribe Tea can be found at Island Naturals, Down to Earth, Safeway, KTA, and Time Supermarket as well as all 7-Eleven stores. Enjoy an Aribe Tea today.
A huge mahalo goes out to Hawaiian Ola for their awesome noni juice shots. Noni fruit is the most widely known natural healing medicine throughout Polynesia. Used as a traditional medicine by Hawaiians for thousands of years, noni is recognized for its many numerous health giving properties. These organic noni juice shots by Hawaiian Ola are farmed and bottled on the big island of Hawaii and can be found in over 400 locations in the islands as well as hawaiianola.com. And a special thanks to Alamir for their pure grade high quality handmade incense. Hands down, Alamir makes the absolute best incense available. Pure, clean, and balanced with infinite Heavenly, divine, exotic, and pleasantly beautiful scents and aromas to choose from. Be sure to check out their amazing all-natural hygiene products as well. Incense by Auramir is available at a health store near you or available online at Auramir.com. As for my surf sponsors, Mahalo to Dekine for their awesome surf products. A trusted, loved, and recognized brand that originated right here in the Hawaiian Islands on the island of Maui in 1979. Dekine products are available at your local surf shop or their website, dekine.com. A definite thank you goes to Ross and Surfboards. Shaper Pat Rawson has been shaping surfboards since 1966, which includes shaping boards on surfing's most respected proving grounds, the North Shore of Oahu since 1972. One of the most well-recognized Ross and Surfboard moments is that iconic Tommy Carroll snap at the North Shore's infamous Bonsai Pipeline. Check out Ross and Surfboards at a surf shop near you or go to patrossandsurfboards.com. And for my bow hunting sponsors, I'd like to thank ASAT Camouflage. ASAT stands for All Season, All Terrain. Be the tree or become the bush with ASAT's patented camo pattern that blends you into nature and masks you from the eyes of the game you're seeking to put on your dinner plate. Hands down, ASAT is the best functioning high quality camouflage in the business. Get out in the field with your ASAT camo and see for yourself. Check them out at ASATCamo.com. A big thank you to Cash Took Bowcraft for your handmade arrows. Cash Took Bowcraft makes not only handmade wooden arrows and bone broadheads, but also makes handcrafted self and longbows, bone knives, fire starters, muzzle loaders, and more. If you're a traditional bow hunter, wooden arrows is the only way to fly. Be sure to check out CashTookBowCraft.com. And now I'd like to reach out and thank my snowboarding sponsors, starting with D-Curve. Guys, D-Curve is a cutting-edge eyewear and lifestyle company pushing you to explore your boundaries and defy your limits. D-Curve uses the same patented technology that NASA uses in space to protect eyes from radiation that blocks out 100% UV rays and harmful blue light. D-Curve helmets, goggles, sunglasses, and more can be found at dcurve.com. Check them out. You'll be super stoked you did.